Look, y'all wasn't singing this morning. Y'all was singing. <laughs> it sounded good. You know, last week, if you remember, I told you that if you want to hear from the Lord, you've got to be willing to hear everything He's saying. Not just the things that you want Him or you want to hear. You've got to be hear Him on His terms, not on your terms. One of the things I've come to learn, and it took me a longer time in life before I learned this, but there are times that following God and listening for Him to speak, a lot of times I've got to actually step out in faith first. Here's what I mean by that. Almost all of the time that I've experienced and I've been able to experience with other people, God never will give you the big picture. God's not going to give you the big picture that you're praying for. He doesn't reveal that grand plan, right? He doesn't give you the plan that's going to make things easier for you. God, if I just had this plan, if I knew how it ended, well, it'd make things easier. Mm -mm. Nah, it doesn't show you the end result. Instead, what he does is he answers those prayers one step at a time. Because you know what would happen if you knew the full plan, right? You just screw it up. You just got to take those steps of faith at times. Step by step, prayer by prayer, and God's plan will be revealed. Now, He will guide you, He will direct you. But those are times He's like, Donnie, I just need you to take this step. I'm going to just show you a portion of. Of what you're praying for. Because I just need you to take that one little step. And then trust me. Take that step, Donnie. And trust me. I've got a plan for you. I've got a perfect plan for you. We've got to do that. When you step out in faith. And you make yourself Available. I've titled today's message, Make Yourself Available. Let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that we can pray and that we can ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And not only can we ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit, but we can thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because I know the Holy Spirit's here today. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to this place, your house, we can worship, we can praise, we can sing, we can sing, and we can say thank you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you believe that God has a perfect plan for your life? God's got a perfect, a perfect plan for every single one of His children. And get this. If he's got a perfect plan for your life, then he's got a calling for you. Do you believe that? See, too many times we think, you know what? You know, old brother Donnie, you know, he got the calling. Right? So and so, yep, they got the calling. Let me tell you something. All of you got the calling. Okay? Every single one of you. Every single person. That has asked God, surrendered their life to our Lord Jesus Christ, got the calling. As Christians, we all got a part to play in the body of Christ. Being a spiritual influence, leading others to Christ. We all, every single one of us, are a link in that chain. It doesn't matter if you're the very first link, the last link, or the one in the middle. You know what a chain does? It all holds us together. All of us, every single one of us, equally important, and they all hold each other together. This morning, I want to talk about your calling of availability. Whatever God 
has for your life, whatever calling God has on your life, whatever ministry God has given you. And He has. He's given every single one of you a ministry. The key to that ministry is availability. Before God uses anybody, they have to be available to be used. Would you agree? Think about it. Nobody, listen to me, nobody in the Bible was consistently and mightily used by the Lord unless they were first willing to be made available. You remember Samuel we talked about, I think, two weeks ago? Little Samuel, 12 years old. Lord called Samuel and he answered. What did he say? Here I am. Here I am. See, Samuel was mightily used by God. Why? Because he was available. Mary, Jesus' mother. Thousands of other virgins in Galilee. Perhaps hundreds in Nazareth. But Mary was one of the ones that sat down, went down in history. You know why? Because she was available. She made herself available. When the angel came to her and told her she was chosen, remember what Mary said? said this, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. In other words, she was saying, I'm available for you. Jesus. He walked a perfect life. Walked a perfect will. God's will for his life. You know why? He was available. Now I can go on and on and on and on. I can talk to you about the disciples. I can talk to you about Paul. I can go on and tell you all these great, great people in the Bible. But you know why they were so mightily used by God? Because they were available. They made themselves available. And you might be saying, or thinking, well, you know what, Donnie, that was in the Bible. I'm not Samuel. I'm not Mary. I'm a disciple. Lord knows I ain't Jesus. I'm not Paul. I'm just me. Right? God can't use me. He can't do anything like that with me. I'm, I'm not important. Yes, you are. And yes, He can. Don't fool yourself. I can go back and talk to you about the little boy that fed 5,000. You remember that story? What did that boy have? Five biscuits and two sardines. That's it. That's all he had. He didn't have much. But what did he have? Or what did he... How did he... Why did that happen? Because he made his lunch... Available. Jesus took what he had. Took that little boy's food. Little lunch. Took what he had available. And he used it. And not only did he use it. He multiplied it. And when everything was said and done. He had 12 huge baskets of leftovers. Jesus took what he had. Took what he had that was available and made a huge, huge difference. This morning I want to talk about our availability. Turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, I'm going to read verses 1 through 11. says this, One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gethsemane, which is actually the Sea of Galilee, it says, The people were crowding around him and they was listening to the word of God. And he saw at the water's edge two boats, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. 
He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little bit from shore. Then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deeper water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I'll let down those nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled the partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and they filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and he said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. And then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on the shore, they left everything behind, and they followed him. Now, if I was going to take you back and read through chapter 4, you'd see that Jesus said he'd been busy, very, very, very busy, preaching and teaching, performing miracles, casting out demons. And he was exhausted. He was tired. All he wanted to do was try to get away, get to himself, and just get a little rest, right? Get a little peace and quiet. But he couldn't do it. Couldn't get away because the people were flocking to hear him. Everywhere he went, he was being followed by crowds. And they grew, and they grew, and they grew, and they grew, and it got so bad that the people had crowded Jesus right up next to the sea. His sandals was right next to the water. People were crowding so much, pushing so hard, trying to get that front row seat. He's right on the edge of the water. Couldn't walk any further. That very first verse we learned, Jesus was pushed right up next to the water. It says the people were crowding around him. And they were listening to the Word of God. These people were hungry. They were hungry for the Word of God. They wanted more of what He was teaching. More of what He was preaching. So what did Jesus do? He made Himself available. Verse 2 tells us Jesus was on the brink of being pushed right into that water. Everybody there was pushing and shoving. They wanted that front row seat. And Jesus needs a place that he can separate himself from. He needs to get separated so he doesn't get overrun. He's not overcrowded. What he needs is a pulpit. He needs a place that he can get behind, that he can teach from, that he can preach from. So he's looking around and what's he find? He finds a boat. He figures, you know what, I can get in this boat. I can be out in the water off the edge where people's not going to be crowded. And I can... Preach to them. I can teach from there. In verse 3, we see he uses Peter's boat. Simon Peter's. You know why he used Simon Peter's boat? Because it was available. It was ready for the master's use. Simon was willing to give of what he had. (laughs) Even if it was a nasty Dirty, smelly, old fishing boat. Let me tell you something. There's a lesson there. God will use whatever we make available to Him, no matter how ineffective we think it is. And get this, Jesus didn't demand to use that boat. He didn't just take it. He spoke to Peter, and Peter, you know, Peter could have refused Peter could have said, no, 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 you don't want that boat. Use somebody else's boat. Lord, you don't want my boat. My boat's not good. My, my boat's nasty, it's dirty, it's, it's smelly. I, I, I need to do some stuff to that boat. Well, use somebody else's boat. Ain't what he said, did he? He got in the boat, didn't he? Peter let him use it. Lesson here, Jesus don't force us to be an instrument in His work. 
He doesn't force us to lead others to Christ. He uses only what we make available. See, we're supposed to be linking His chain, are we not? We're not supposed to be the missing link. If you won't allow God to work in your life and through your life, He won't. He won't. But let me tell you something. If you make that decision to not be used, then you'll never get the opportunity to see what you truly are capable of being and what you're truly capable of doing. Take a look at verse 3. Jesus tells Peter, go out a little bit from that shore. And then in verse 4, he says, launch out into the deep. See, first he told him, hey, just go a little bit away from the shore. Just go a little bit. And after he went that little bit, then he said, okay, now you're ready to go a little bit deeper. When we make available what little we do have, he will lead us into deeper and greater things. Jesus won't ask you to launch out into that deep water until you first get a little bit from the shore. Jesus will lead you and guide you step by step by step. Remember what I said earlier? Step of faith. You'll hear it. Jesus won't ask you to launch out into that deep until you take that little step first. You've got to make yourself available. You've got to make yourself available with what you have. Then, then He'll lead you out into the deep water. But first, you've got to let Him into your boat. Pay attention to this. Too many so-called Christians haven't let Jesus into their boat. He's still on the shore. You're doing your own thing. See, we're glad to let Jesus save us, aren't we? We're glad to let Jesus take us to heaven. But we don't want Him in the boat with us. We don't want Jesus to take our life and get too involved in our life. Lord, I want you to take me to heaven, but I don't want you to get too involved in my life. I like my decisions. I like the direction that I'm going. So take me to heaven, Lord. I, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that, but don't get too involved. Right? We don't really want to get, give that full control over to God. And what we're saying is we don't want Jesus to be Lord over our life. We don't want to give Him Lordship over our life. Let me tell you something. That idea is not led by the Holy Spirit, and I, for one, do not believe that's salvation. You first have to come to the point where you are willing to be available for Jesus to use you no matter what. Salvation is when you give your life over to Christ. Salvation is when you surrender your life over to Christ. Salvation is when you say, Lord, do with me as you will. Lord, have your way. Have your way, Lord. You've got to be available. We must be available to be a link in His chain. Not allow Him to be a link in our chain. Notice what Jesus told him in verse 4. He says, let down your nets. If you want to catch fish, you've got to let your nets down, don't you? Makes sense, doesn't it? Fish don't just jump into the boat, do they, Donnie? You can go fishing. You can try. They ain't going to just jump in the boat. If you ignore the lost conditions of the people around you, the wall lost, they're not going to get any closer to heaven. Are they? So what did the disciples use that they had available? Their nets. Jesus didn't tell them to use what they didn't have, did he? He didn't, <laughs> he didn't tell them, hey, I, need, I got some fishing poles for you. Need you to go fish with these fishing poles. Didn't have fishing poles. So Jesus asked them to use what they had available. Jesus knew they didn't have fishing poles. He knew all they had available were just those nets. 
Jesus is only going to ask you to use what you have available. You might be thinking, Donnie, I don't have anything available. Donnie, I don't have anything to give. Donnie, I don't have anything to offer. Well, I'm sorry, that's a lie. You put whatever God has given you to use. You make it available to Him. Mark tells a story of a woman who took an alabaster box of perfume, poured it all over Jesus' head, went down all over His feet. Some of the disciples, they got mad and they rebuked this woman and said, Hey, you know what? You could have sold all that. You could have given that money to the poor. And Jesus stops them. In Mark 14, 8, Jesus tells them this. She hath done what she could. She made herself available. If you don't do what you can do, you'll never launch out to that deep water and do more. Don't worry over what you can't do. All right? Don't worry over what you cannot do. Just do what you can do. See, what if I thought to myself, you know what, I'm not going to preach because I can't ever preach like Billy Graham. All right? But anything ever happen? What if a high school quarterback said that he wasn't going to play football because he can't play like Tom Brady? What if a teacher said, well, you know what, I can't win the Teacher of the Year award, so I'm just not going to teach. I can't play golf like Phil Nicholson, so I'm not even going to start. We all have a start somewhere, don't we? We all got to start somewhere, don't we? Start doing what you can do. And then do it to the best of your availability. Let me tell you something. When you do, when you step out in faith, and God's pushing and God's leading, the Holy Spirit's moving, and you step out in faith, let me tell you something. You'll start to see things happen in your life that you know you did not do. You'll give encouraging words to people that you can't figure out where they came from. You'll be in situations, helping situations, going, I'm not prepared for this. I didn't train for this. Lord, I don't know where this is coming from. And when the situation's over and you're walking away, you're going, where in the world did those words come from? Where did those... Anything that I helped in that matter, where did that come from? You see, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit working through you. Why? Because you make yourself available. The problem is we get fearful. God, I can't do that. You know I can't do that. Why would you ask me to do that? See, too many things, at times we're thinking about the deep water. We're thinking about all the deep where the boats need to go. And God's saying, I just need you to get into the little bit right here close to the shore water. We're going to take care of that down the road. But you've got to step in to the boat first. You've got to get away from the shore first. Take a look at verse 5. Here's where doubt creeped in on old Peter. Peter says, Master, we've worked hard all night. And we ain't caught a thing. Jesus tells these disciples to drop their nets. Tells Peter, drop your nets. And the very first thing Peter says is, Lord, you know we worked all night. I can't, we can't do it. It ain't no sense. It don't make sense. It's no use to. Up to this point, did you realize that there was growth that was going on? Jesus showed up. They had growth. They got into the boat. There's growth. They took out just a little bit into the water. There's growth. 
Then they went out to the deep water. There's growth. But let me tell you something. When you step out in faith, when you step out in faith, when you make yourselves available, you will grow. But you always will have a little bit of discouragement. See what happened? The disciples, they started talking about their past. As soon as they started to grow, they started talking about their past. We worked all night. We caught nothing. See, the old enemy, the devil, he's going to try to discourage you. Just like he tried to discourage them. Let me tell you something. When that happens, don't focus on your past. Don't focus on your failures. Don't focus on your flaws. Don't let your past keep you from doing what God knows. He knows. He's got that perfect plan I talked about. He's got a perfect plan for your life. Don't let your past keep you from doing what God already knows that you're capable of doing. Don't let your past failures keep you from accomplishing, not accomplishing, excuse me, what God has for your life. Don't let who you used to be keep you from who God wants you to be. God will do that. The Holy Spirit working through you will do that. And Peter, he follows up and he says, look here, but because you say so, I'll let down the nets. But because you want me to, Lord, I'll let them down. And victory comes swooping in. Here's what Peter's saying. In spite of the fact that I can't see what good it's going to do to set these nets out, I can't see how this is even going to work. I can't see how this even makes any sense. God, I can't even see how you're going to use me. I'm going to do it. You know why? Because Jesus Christ said so. Take a look at verse 6 and 7. I'm going to read this to you. When they had done so, they caught such, such a large amount of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their uh, partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and they filled their boat so full that they began to sink. Because Peter had made himself available, and what he had available, the nets started to break. The nets got holes in them. But let me tell you something. There will be times, sometimes, when it feels like we have holes in our nets. We try to witness. Hole in the net. We try to teach. Hole in the net. We try to live that Christian life, right? Show that Christian testimony, that Christ Christian character. And sometimes, yes, there's a hole in the net. And what we end up seeing is our inadequacies, and our shortcomings, our inabilities, our weaknesses. But notice what, how Peter turns those faults and failures and doubt into growth. There in verse 7, even with broken nets... Even with holes in their nets, he still caught fish. Why? Because Peter followed through. He said there in verse 5, But because you say so, I will let down the nets. See, old Peter, he made himself available to Christ. He made himself available. He put his boat out there. He made that available. He used the nets, those nasty, stinky nets, put them available. And what happened? Jesus used all of it. Take a look at uh, verses 8 and 9. It says Peter was astonished. Let me tell you something. You'll be amazed at what God can do with your broken nets, with your inadequacies, with your weaknesses, your flaws. You just got to make them available to Christ. And let me tell you something. He will use them, and you will be astonished. We learn that this experience humbled Peter. There in verse 8, Peter realized he was nothing, and Christ was everything. Why? Because he made himself available. He knew he couldn't have done it. He knew it was nothing that he could have done. He tried. 
He failed. If you remember, it was all night long. He was doing it. And God got in his boat. Jesus Christ got in his boat. And what happened? Turned the situation around. Why? Because he made himself available. Peter knows that he wasn't fit to be in the same boat with Jesus Christ. Get this. Neither are we. But old Peter, or excuse me, just as well as us and Peter, we have an opportunity to be in the boat with Jesus Christ. That boat that Peter made available ended up being a pulpit, ended up being a microphone, ended up being a testimony. You and I are unworthy to be in a pulpit for Christ. We really are. Let me tell you something, that's exactly what Jesus Christ wants. That's exactly what Jesus Christ wants. And he'll use it. He'll use you if we make ourselves available. As I come to a close, in verse 10 11, we learn what the ultimate goal was. Jesus had better things in store for him, right? Didn't want him just to catch fish. He wanted to catch men. Just wanted them to go out for little things so they could learn to get Big things. He wanted them to go from fishers of fish to fishers of men. And that should be the ultimate goal for every Christian. That should be the ultimate goal for you. But it can only happen when you make yourself available. God does not ask for your ability. You realize that? A lot of times we think well, we've got a lot to offer. God does not care about your ability. He only cares about your availability. Let's close in prayer. Lord, thank you so much. I thank you for who you are. Thank you for you being father. Thank you for being dad. Lord, thank you for caring so much. I thank you for your grace, Lord. We don't deserve anything. What we do have, that grace that we experience, is all because of you, Lord. I'm so thankful for that, Lord. I thank you that we can give you our availability. Lord, I pray for myself as well as this church. Lord, move us, guide us, direct us for your will, your perfect plan, your perfect will, and make us available. In Jesus' name, amen. As we close the service today, I'm not going to, you stay seated. We're going to play a song, a closing song. Don't need to sing along.